Happy Friday, everyone. We are so excited because Monday is the big day. I know that some of you have been a little apprehensive about bringing the kids and that's perfectly normal. And I'm so grateful that you have felt comfortable to ask me questions and to really understand what we're going to be doing. And if at this point you're uncomfortable and you've told me that, and then you decide in a couple weeks you'd like to try it again, call us. As long as we have room, your children are always welcome at our school, you know that. So tonight is our last story because one of the reasons I was doing the bedtime stories was to stay connected when we were closed, but we will be open. So this week we've kind of concentrated on Disney uh, we read Peter Pan, which is John's favorite book, my husband's, and he's been the cameraman this whole time, so thank you, honey, for all that you did for that. Last night, we read Snow White, which is my favorite Disney book, and tonight is kind of a romantic book, and it's our favorite romantic Disney story, and it is Lady and the Tramp. We love this story, so we hope you enjoy it, too. Lady was a lucky little Cocker Spaniel. She had everything a dog could want. Her beloved owners, Jim Deere and Darling, had pampered her since puppyhood. They gave her the tastiest tidbits to eat and the softest bed to sleep in, and they showered her with affection. Lady returned this kindness by waking her master each morning with a gentle lick on the cheek. And while he was at work, Lady stayed close to her mistress, protecting her from any possible harm. But one day, everything changed. As Lady told her friends, Trusty and Jacques, Darling now seemed more interested in the tiny sweater she was knitting than in her faithful friend. Lady's pals quickly put two and two together and figured out that Darling was going to have a baby. Babies are mighty sweet, Trusty the Bloodhound said. And very, very soft, Jacques Biscotti added. Why, a wee baby is nothing but a bundle of trouble. An unfamiliar voice chimed in. The voice belonged to a scruffy stranger named Tramp. Though Tramp had no family of his own, he seemed to know quite a lot about babies, and none of it was good. Take it from me, Pigeon, Tramp told Lady. A human heart has only so much room for love and affection. When a baby moves in, the dog moves out. I don't think that's true to you. Let's see. Although tra Tramps were... Let's start this again. Although Tramp's words worried Lady, she couldn't believe that her family would ever be unkind. And once the baby was born, Lady saw just how wrong Tramp had been. For not only did Lady still have her family's love, she now had one more person to cherish and protect. Everything was fine until Jim Deere and Darling decided to take a short vacation. Don't worry, old girl, Jim Deere told Lady before they left. Aunt Sarah will be staying here to care for you and the baby. But Aunt Sarah soon made it clear that she did not like dogs at all. To make matters worse, she had brought her two nasty cats along. Lady watched helplessly as they wrecked the living room and terrorized the goldfish and the birds. When the cats headed upstairs, however, Lady sprang into action. She raced ahead to stop them from entering the nursery. The nasty creatures tried to run by her, but Lady stopped them in their tracks with a threatening growl. Aunt Sarah heard the commotion and poked her head out of the nursery. She took one look at Lady growling and the two cats sniffling, and she ran to protect her pets. Oh, my precious pussies, she crooned. And scooping up the cats in her arms, she carried them gently downstairs. Then Aunt Sarah dragged Lily off to the pet store. I want a muzzle for this vicious beast, she told the sales clerk. I have just the thing, the clerk replied, placing one of the awful contraptions over the struggling dog's face. In desperation, poor lady ran out of the store. I don't like Aunt Sarah, do you? Outside, a pack of stray dogs began to chase her. Horns blared and tires screeched as lady raced blindly through the streets, across the railroad tracks and into a strange and scary part of town. Her heart pounded. Lady ran on with the strays yapping at her heels. Just when she thought she couldn't take another step, a brown ball of fur rushed to her side. 
biting and barking, Tramp fought off Lady's attackers until every last one had turned their tail and slunk away. Tramp helped Lady remove the, the hateful muzzle, and then she told him her tale of woe. Poor pig, she said when she had finished her story. You sure have had a terrible day. What you need is a night out on the town to cheer you up. Tramp led Lady to a quaint little Italian restaurant. There they shared a delicious plate of spaghetti and meatballs while musicians serenaded them with a romantic tune. After dinner, Lady and Tramp took a moonlight stroll. When they came upon a patch of wet cement, Tramp scratched a big heart in the middle and placed one of his paws inside it. Lady did the same. A Silvery moon was high in the sky when the two tired dogs finally snuggled up under a tree and fell asleep. When they awoke the next morning, Lady was horrified to realize that she had spent the whole night away from home. Ah, Pidge, Tramp said, there's a big wide world out there just waiting for us. Why go back at all? Because my family needs me, Lady replied, and I need them. Besides, who will protect the baby if I'm not there? Tramp had no answer for that. He simply bowed his head in defeat. And even though Lady was sad to leave Tramp, she could hardly wait to return to her family. But when Lady got home, an angry Aunt Sarah was waiting for her. I have a special place for you now, Aunt Sarah snapped as she led Lady to a doghouse in the backyard. This should keep you out of trouble, she said, chaining Lady to a stake in the ground. That night, Lady was moping around the yard when a big gray rat scurried out of the woodpile, scampered up the porch railing, and darted into an upstairs window. That's the baby's room, Lady cried. She dashed forward but was jerked to a painful halt by her chain. Lady barked frantically to attract Aunt Sarah's attention. Aunt Sarah finally appeared at the back door, but only to yell at Lady. Stop that racket, she said before slamming the door again. Just then, Tramp raced into the yard. He had heard Lady barking and had come to help her once more. There's a rat in the baby's room, Lady said, and with no thought for his own safety, Tramp ran inside to get the rat. Tramp reached the nursery in the nick of time. The baby was laying in the crib and the rat was about to pounce. Tramp struck first. Fur flew and furniture fell as dog and rat tore around the room. The rat was fast and fierce, but he was no match for Trump, for Tramp. By the time Aunt Sarah burst in, there was no sign of the rat, just Tramp and the topsy-turvy room. Aunt Sarah thought that Tramp had been after the baby and she quickly called the dog catcher. Don't come back, you vicious brute, Aunt Sarah warned as Tramp was carried off to the pound. As soon as Lady explained what had happened, Trusty and Jock took off after Tramp. They chased the dog catcher through the dark and stormy night. When a taxi appeared out of the fog, the dog catcher's horses reared up and his wagon toppled over. Jim, Deer, and Darling were in at the taxi. They had come home and discovered the rat. It was clear that, the tr that Tramp had been protecting the baby and they went after him. He was a true hero. Jim, Deer, and Darling decided to take Tramp into their home. This is where you belong, Jim, Deer told Tramp. You're part of our family now. And soon Lady and Tramp had a family of their own. Three pretty pups who looked just like their mother and one mischievous scamp who was clearly taking after his father. I love that story, I hope you do too. I want you all to have a great weekend, have wonderful family time, and be ready to come and see us on Monday morning. Good night, everybody.